Hey everyone, welcome to the second video in the Telegram LibGDX AI tutorial series. In this video, we're going to cover the topic of handling delayed telegrams. So it might seem easy enough, as we saw in the previous video, there were a whole bunch of or methods that the message dispatcher allowed us to use. And I'm sure you guys noticed that there was one particular method that allowed you to input a float value that was the amount of time passed until it would dispatch the message out to the agents that are currently listening. So before we do that, uh, just to recap, from the previous video, we learned about the three ba uh, like essential classes that we'll be working with. And we also had an analogy that came along with that to help us understand like what's going on. So with the Telegram system uh, in the GDX AI library, you have the message dispatcher, which you can kind of think of as like a post office. And then you also have agents or telegraphs, which allow, uh, or they're kind of like the entities or actors or just objects in your system that are able to send and receive mail to and from that post office. And the post office is the one that uh, tells or decides like, okay, you guys get this mail, you guys get this mail. And uh, that's just based on whoever has like a PO box in that, in that post office or something. And then you also have the telegrams, which are the pieces of mail. So each piece of mail has a number in it and that just gets sent to the post office and then the post office will deliver that mail accordingly to the respective agents that are listening for that mail. Um, so to show you guys uh, where we left off, uh, we had Bob, uh, the box man that we created in his own little Boxer D world and he was listening to five different messages. Uh, same message, go left, go right, go up, go down. And when we ran that, um, a simple little setup, I pressed the up key and you'll notice I turned on the debugging. Um, instant telegram dispatched at time zero zero by null, for null, message code is one. So let's uh, kind of dissect this real quick. So you see the word instant. That is because we're not using any kind of kind of delayed messaging like uh, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do in this video. Um, we also see the dispatched at time zero zero. That's another key thing that will be brought up in just a second. Um, then you have by null for null. And that is because when you're dispatching a message, you can actually designate which telegraph sent that message and which telegraph is uh, supposed to receive it. So like the, the intent of that, tel that telegram. And then you'll see the message code is one. So if we go back, because uh, I'll go down real quick and then I'll go back up, you'll notice one, zero, one. And so zero and one is go down and up. So to kind of just read that out, whoops. Um, go up, go down, go up, just as uh, we have set up here. So that's just using um, this dot message manager dot set debug enabled true. And that'll allow you to get that nice kind of a GDX app log output here. So now that we kind of understand the structure of those messages, um, let's dig a little deeper and start getting more involved with the GDX AI uh, telegram system. So to do this, we have to set up a few things first. So if you remember from the last video, I did a little goof and that's because I kind of jumped ahead of myself and I was like, I know I'm forgetting something, but um, then, then I, I gave misinformation because I was just kind of uh, thrown off a bit. But now I'm gonna introduce it to you guys the right way. Uh, hopefully you caught that annotation that I put in. Um, there was the message manager update that I talked about towards the end of the video. Now this particular method is used to allow the message manager to work with those delayed messages. So it'll use the GDX AI timepiece and as the timepiece keeps going uh, up using the delta time, which is the time between frames, uh, render frames, which is what this value here is, then the message manager knows to increment its, its time and uh, it uses the position that 
the message arrived at in the timepiece, and then it does the delta time that it needs to send the message, and so it, it just uses the timepiece to coordinate that. And so you might be thinking like, okay, so that's it. That's all we have to do is just add this uh, manager.update and we'll be good. Well, that's, that's where it kind of gets a little confusing. So depending on how you have your game structured, um, let's say there's a pause mode in your game. Now, if you're always updating this message manager, um, then you might end up finding that your messages are still getting sent if you pause your screen or something like that. Now, you, you don't want that to happen. So um, you have to set this up the right way. And uh, in order to do that, you have to include one more thing. And if you remember me mentioning, there's there was that time piece that I was talking about, a little bit different than uh, just getting the delta time. Now, you'll notice that I'm using a static reference to the GDX AI class, and I, I have it calling dot get time piece. So this same singleton instance is the same thing that's happening down here where I have message manager dot get instance. So that'll be created one time. And uh, once I do that, I can call like update with the delta time. And you wanna do this in your uh, update method, of course. Um, you can do it either before or after the world dot step, preferably I, I'd say after the world dot step, just so you have the latest numbers of the world. Um, but I guess that doesn't really matter. Just just have it kind of towards the top of your update method because it, it is an important delta time change. Uh, it is like a time reference. So, so you need to make sure that's all accounted for. So now that you have that method being called, uh, each update method, this method will actually take effect. So I'll show you guys real quick uh, the difference. Um, but first, we do need a timed message. So it's easy enough just to come in here. And so I have a uh, down key. When I press down, it sends, it dispatches the message down to Bob. And so when Bob picks that up, he'll start moving down to his down position. And in order to put a delay on it, it's just the first parameter or the first argument of this method. So I'm just going to type 2f. And this works in seconds, by the way. So when you instead of like the standard milliseconds or something, it, it does work in seconds. So two will be uh, two seconds that will delay the message and then it'll send it out. So first, I'll, uh, I'll do it without this. And you know, what? I actually need to close this one first. And so we still have this dot message manager dot update. And all we've really changed is we added a delay on the dispatch message and we are now updating. So I'll press up, he's going up, I'll press down. And you notice that delayed telegram for null for null recorded at time zero zero and message code is zero. So obviously the message dispatcher got the message, but uh, you'll notice there's some new words being used in here, delayed, because we did send a delayed message, but the zero, zero, remember how I was saying that's important? Notice how it's not going up at all. Anytime, like, so I'll add more messages, just a whole bunch of messages, and notice how it's always zero, zero. And that is because we are not updating the timepiece. So now that I put that back in there, uh, we should be able to witness some timed messages happening. So I'll go up and I'll go down, one, two, and look at that, there it goes. So yeah, now you, if you come back in here and you can see instant telegram dispatched at time 1.699, blah, blah, blah. Um, still null from null because we didn't really set specifics of the by and for. And um, then this delayed one is recorded at time. So it takes the current time and then it accumulates the delta between the frames, and then once it reaches above or at two seconds, then the queued telegram gets dispatched to all the agents that are listening for that message. So hopefully that's easy enough to understand. Um, maybe try it out yourself. And you'll notice that this number will keep increasing, and that's just because it accumulates uh, GDX AI timepiece will continually accumulate that time. You don't ever need to reset it. It's, it'll just always keep building up. 
Um, but this goes back to where I was talking about like it's it's very important to know where you're doing this. Um, I recommend doing it in your update method of the current screen that we have more control over your timepiece. Uh, again, because we're using a static reference and singleton instance of the timepiece, always calling GDXAI get timepiece will always give you that same instance to work with. Um, so really, you're not working with a different timepiece every time you're in a different screen. You're still going to be using the same timepiece. Um, but if we go back, and so we have gdxai.getTimePiece, and you'll see there's like get delta time, get time, and so you can you can kind of uh, get a few of the, uh, you, you can use those numbers in your own way if you want, but you don't have to. Um, it, it just gives you some flexibility if you want to actually uh, do some by hand calculations of time differentials. So um, otherwise, you'll want to use these two methods and then uh, like let's say if so if you, if you have pausing available in your game um, if you add like a pause boolean um, you would want to do if not pause then run all the right respective update code Oop, that was a little too much um, there we go so you do all of this, all of that, and that. And so this would be like your uh, running game code. So if the, if the game isn't paused, um, then it'll run this. And then when you're unpaused, so like else, then do some other stuff, maybe work with the pause menu, that sort of thing, or switch over to the, to the uh, pause screen or however you have that implemented um, a lot of people do it normally in in the game screen uh, just handle it just like by making UI elements visible and whatnot so with that um, fairly straightforward uh, nothing too complex uh, but we will be using this in the future video uh, that will be working with multiple entities soon and we'll also set up some goal-oriented action where we'll actually have the screen set up as a telegraph and we will have a little box that gets to the end of a little level and we can kind of see how to implement like a win uh, situation or even just like working with this pause situation to see how that affects the way things work. But uh, we're gonna be doing some interesting stuff, still kind of doing just random snippets of working with this telegram system. Um, so I'm going to remove this pause real quick, and I think I'll leave you guys at that, maybe mess around a little bit more. I know it was just a short one today, but the next, we, we do need to learn about this timepiece, because this is important as far as time messages go, and also how we'll be using timed messages and learning how to save them out to file so that when we come back into into like a state or some screen or like a cold boot from a game we can take a snapshot of all the AI that was supposed to happen and uh, whatever delayed messages were incurred in the message dispatcher if they haven't been dispatched yet we can actually write those out to a file easy enough and then bring them back in and use them uh, so it's just like we never left the game which is really really cool um, but with that, I'll leave you guys to toy around a bit with some different messages. Uh, just come up with some different stuff. Just play around with it. It's always good to mess around. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.